YouTube, what is going on? It's Luce for the Solution Kicks back with another video. Make sure you comment, like, subscribe, and tap that notification button so you know when I'm dropping another one of these videos. I say this thing, but today we're going to be a little bit more formal because what we're going to talk about today's video is not about sneakers, sure, but more so an offshoot of sneakers and how we basically acquire the uh, fiduciary assets to obtain sneakers. And let's get off that point right there. Let's talk about obtaining fiduciary assets, okay? We are consumers. Here in Sneaker YouTube, all we pretty much do is consume. We buy shoes, we buy gear, We whether that's clothing or uh, electronic items that support our channel. We're buying this gear and these shoes at all costs. Now, at no time do we mention about uh, earning more money unless we're reselling. We don't talk about other streams of obtaining revenue. And I've alluded to this factor right here about this video a couple of times on, um, I believe, uh, goodness, I forget the live I was on. Shout out to BX Raised Me. He had added me to that live one time. I mentioned it in passing on there. I mentioned it on other people's channels. I mentioned it in their comments. I've said it a couple of times on various social media platforms about investing, but I'm gonna focus on one element of investing. And it is something that we take for granted, but we use it all the time in the sneaker culture. Hopefully it hasn't uh, caused you any headaches. So I'm talking about Cash App, the app, on your cell phone device, Cash App. Do you know you can invest? You can buy stocks via Cash App. Now, let's talk about stocks in their pure simplistic form. You're essentially buying a small piece of a um, certified business, if you will, a business gone public. When you talk about IPOs, they tell me the business gone public, and you can the public can now buy pieces, stocks, if you will, of that business. And that keeps the business afloat. You know, for the most part, people take interest in it and they go, oh, that has value to me. I'm gonna buy something in, so therefore I own a very, very small piece of the business, depending upon the share. So you hear things like minority owner in a business, majority owner in the business, because they have dumped in a considerable amount of money in there where they get to call shots on their business somewhat. You know, they sit on the board, okay? Uh, you, in a sense, you are a, a stakeholder when you buy stocks in these companies. You have a say, you basically decide on their financial fate as a company with you being somewhere else far off not really involved in the day-to-day -day operations of the business but it can make you money so how do you know what stocks to buy first off is what are you interested in what are these things that you know about what business do you have some kind of knowledge about that you can say hey I can go and study this business, I can throw some money at it, and I'm okay with that because I know how it works. Basically, your day-to-day -day things that you kind of sort of take for granted. Let's take Nike, for example. Nike obviously is an IPO. You know what they cost. You go and look at it and see what they're worth. Today, today is April 1st, 2020. You can look at what's Nike worth currently at this moment. Now, Cash App is basically dumbed down, okay, simplified how to buy stocks and how to monitor your stocks and how to pull the money out of it in its simplest form. You have some other platforms out there. E-Trade was one of the, the bigger ones back in the day and they, they were a little bit more um, dawning, if you will, but still not hard to manage and, and move and maneuver through it. Then you had Robinhood, which is a, it's purely about stocks and it simplified it for the everyday person. Then you had Acorn, where it takes your change and you throw that stocks here and there. Now, the biggest thing people are concerned about is how much does a stock cost me? What is it worth? Now, some of these more established companies that have great reputations that are stable platforms, let's take Amazon for instance. Today, April 1st, 2020, Amazon is worth. Now, you have to say to yourself, what kind of income do I have? What kind of money do I have set aside, available that I can throw you know, a hundred plus dollars at this stock if I have it to throw out there. Now, let's just take a number, okay? We are sneakerheads, and some of you don't mind dropping a, uh, what I would call an extreme amount on a sneaker. Something that's obviously going to fall apart. It's going to depreciate physically. Maybe not in value, it's going to maintain value over time, but it's basically going to fall apart, and you're going to be holding it in a museum like artwork. 
that's fine, that's okay. A lot of you already know a little bit about stocks because of StockX. You're basically doing the same concept. If you're watching a shoe on StockX, watching the price go around, you're basically watching a stock, and that's where they got that concept from. So let's use a number, $250. That's not an exorbitant amount for most people for the shoe. That's that limit right there where I cut it off at, like, nah, I'm good. Um, so you had $250 expendable income for this shoe. You aren't getting any discounts. We're going to say that shoe is at 8.25 on the tag. So now you're talking about 270 plus on that sneaker somewhere around there. Give or take, that's just my ballpark math. With that 270 plus dollars, you could buy several, several, several shares in one company or maybe one or two shares in a more established company such as a Microsoft and Amazon and Apple, depending on what they're worth currently today. Okay, and you throw that in. Now maybe you say, you know something, that stock is a little expensive. However, I'm okay to throw in that type of money at a sneaker. So I don't want to buy a full um, piece of that stock at the moment. So I'm gonna put in a percentage. I don't have uh, $150 in the stick. The share is at seven, $75. I can buy $100 worth of the share. So I basically have a share plus a partiality of the share at the same time. You can do that. If you look in there, it gives you different options. I'm gonna throw some screenshots up there so you can see that. So once you begin to do this, you can subscribe to stocks that you don't have any money uh, thrown. I always say throw it at it. You know, right, that's just my, my euphemism I use. Throwing money at a stock, I say that. Now, I have stocks that I'm subscribed to that I like to monitor. I haven't purchased them yet, but I'm monitoring the market right now. And you know what's going on due to the, uh, the health situation we have going on. People are in panic. They're trying to hold on to their little their money a little bit more. They're pulling stocks out of things. So you have stocks on the down tick right now. Don't be afraid of that, okay? Actually, this is a good time to really get into the stock market because this is the long game of financial readiness. Now, you subscribe to this stock and you're watching it. You're watching it. And you go, you know something? That's at a good rate. I'm going to pull the trigger because what we have going on right now, like I said, with fear, and panic people are pulling their money out of these stocks i need to hold on to this this is money i could use right now now if that's your concern i'll say get a savings account and throw money in there you know get your 0.03 percent whatever it is you know back into your account that's fine that works for you you're throwing several hundred you can see it it's fine it's not going up and down and um you're fine with that so let me give you another basic element of financial readiness. We all should have some kind of insurance of some sort. And I will say this, GoFundMe is not life insurance. Stop it, okay? And this is what I talk about, uh, disposable income, expendable income, money that you basically can waste and it doesn't hurt you. You spend money on least important things, okay? You buy extra shoelaces for your shoes. You buy a matching t-shirt for your sneakers. You buy a matching hat for your sneakers. That money right there can go into some life insurance that you may or may not have. Hopefully you have some life insurance. That is an investment, by the way. That's how you're 18, 20, you can get good life insurance, 18, 20 dollars a month. You know, some of you smoke cigarettes, you have other vices and things like that that cost more than $20. If you purchase that several times a week, that's on you, okay? At this, this is one of the moments I'm gonna count your money for you, okay? because I'm teaching you how to make money. Remember I said, never count a man's money unless you helped him make it, you gave it to him, you're taking it from him, okay? This is number two. I'm helping you make it so I can talk about your money right now. You spend money on least important things, guarantee. Even I do things that like, you know, so I didn't have to buy it, I just want it. However, I invested in stocks, okay? So I don't feel bad when I go out and I be frivolous from time to time, because I'm like, I've done what I need to do. I have this set aside. I'm doing this. I'm okay. So if you don't have life insurance, you can get a simple policy where it's term, whatever you need, okay? Whatever you need. It's set amount at 25. You think you'll live about 35 years, you're in good health. You can get a good life insurance policy for about uh, anywhere between 12 to 25 dollars with a reputable company so you can take that financial strain and burden off your families if you're out here in the streets running around you don't have life insurance that's mind-boggling that's mind-boggling i'm going to say it if you are a dope dealer with no life insurance you are a fool not that i'm condoning that type of behavior but that's one of the first things you can get okay matter of fact your girlfriend might have a policy on you. your baby mom might have a policy when you don't know about it if you're living that life 
But back to that, life insurance basically works on investments. If you look at it, you break it down, that life insurance company belongs to some major financial entity. You know, they might belong to Prudential or uh, Merrill Lynch or something like that. I'm just throwing that out there. All right, they, they, they generally don't operate on their own unless it's a UAA, USAA, and even they have investment companies that basically fund your life insurance policy. So you're kind of going, I'm paying $18 a month, something happens to me, my family gets 120K. How does that work? Investments, people, stocks, that's how it works. Simple as that, okay? Simple as that. You know somebody has a good business, okay? They got a good business plan. You give them $10,000 to start up their business because you feel like, you know something, this is going to work out. That is an investment, okay? You gave that person a loan to jumpstart, okay? Now, you got to talk about solvency and insolvent. Being solvent means that the business is constantly generating money. If they're insolvent, it means that they're not making money anymore. They, they're losing worth and value. So these are the things you got to know when you're dealing with these different stocks. You got to monitor, know their history and things like that. So your private setting solution, what have you invested in? All right, this is not personal for me because I'm basically going to show you. I've invested in the transportation industry. I've invested in the uh, retail industry. I've invested in the energy industry. I've invested in the cannabis industry and I don't smoke, okay? I just know that industry is taking off. Right now, I'm doing research and searching for different companies that are now, they have IPOs. There are a lot of cannabis companies out there you probably know about, but they don't have an IPO. They aren't publicly traded yet, okay? That's what I'm talking about. Did you know Facebook was, didn't have an IPO until about three or four years ago? And everybody was on Facebook for almost a decade plus? Imagine that. All that money they were generating and there were no public investors in that. Now, Facebook typically hangs around eh, $100 plus dollars most time. It's, it's just something that's in use. It has uh, great value. And you say, you hear people all the time, man, I wish I invested in Apple back in the 80s. Man, I wish I invested in Walmart back in the late 80s. Man, I wish I invested in blah, blah, blah. Here's your time, okay? And, and times of decline is where you buy low, okay? You stack up these stocks, got it? And you stockpile them and you wait. Remember, it, this is the long game of financial readiness. We rather spend money to show off the people to say, hey, I'm doing well. Look at me. All right. Have you noticed a trend? Really, really wealthy people don't flaunt their wealth. They don't dress wealthy. All right. You, you look at... Uh, the, the Bill Gates, the, the Jeff Bezos, and you should know these names, all right? Um, the, the, the guy from Virgin Atlantic, they, they don't, they aren't extravagant, okay? They, they, very, they dress very, very nondescript, okay? People without massive amount of money need to show you that they, they achieve the level of success. Your vehicles will never make you money. It's just going to make you feel good for the time being. You're never going to get the money back that you paid out in the vehicle. And that's something something I learned later on in life. I've lived. I've had the two-seater. I've had the coupes. I've had the luxury cars. I've had the big vehicles. And stuff. The only thing I haven't had is a pickup truck. And now I'm kind of like the sports cars. I'm kind of like, I don't have to prove anything to anybody. I'm okay. I don't have to show off. Is it reliable? Is it good on gas? Can I hear the music? Is it cold? Does it get hot? Right? Is the sun beating down on me? And is it, that's all I need. Okay? I don't need to show off to anybody. So I'm like, oh, dad, that's what he drives? And that's what I'm, I'm trying to tell you all. Really, really successful and financially sound people do not worry about depreciable items. Their money is somewhere I was making it work for them. Okay? And that's what I've always been into. So let's look at a couple of things on this and I, I want you to, to make the decision. I'm not saying go out and do this, but a lot of you already have cash app. I want you to, I'm trying to peek, you know, basically poke, excuse me, poke at your curiosity at this and realize that cash app offers you much more. You can even buy Bitcoin, but look you all, it's about financial readiness. Some of us are in a bit of a lurch right now. Some of us aren't doing really well. And for those of us who are we're stable, this isn't affecting us as much. This is not the time to make fun of this and uh, make light of it. That goes back to the video I did where I showed you all the mall 
and you know I gave y'all the time stamp. I said I was kind of on the fence about releasing this because I didn't want y'all to oh man he's profiting off people suffering no this is this is serious business and everything I say in the video is coming to fruition right now all right just make sure you're doing the right thing staying safe social distance social distance that does not mean put 50 people in your backyard or go to some parking lot and hang out and drink with people stop doing stupid stuff like that oh those are my friends all right you don't know where they came from who they're around stop it all right stop it remember comment like subscribe tap the notification button and it's not about how much you pay for that sneakers why you pay that much and i'm out of here boom